So even in the spiritual, the blood of Christ is fighting the unseen parasites, the demon forces, not flesh and blood, but the rulers of darkness. Um, by one blood, uh, the body, all organs of the body, there is one blood that circulates to them. So we are all made by one blood in the body of Christ. In as much as the natural, our bodies have needs, the body of Christ has needs to, for it to function. We need water, we need food. We need to drink the water of life. We need to eat the bread of life for us to function. In as much as this body is a family, we are from a heavenly family. We have heavenly genetics. Whosoever is born of God is, cannot, he, he overcomes the world. We have a home. In as much as this body baths and eats and it clothes, it dresses. So the body of Christ must bath in the blood of Christ, must be dressed in his righteousness, in the word of God. The prophet also says that the sickest body I know of is the body of Christ. It's uh, in as much as the sickness is in our natural body, the mystic body of Christ is sick when people are accusing one another and disjointed. So we, when you wake up in the morning, all members of your body wake up. So in that resurrection, every member of the body of Christ shall rise. So we find that there is no useless member of the body. Every member is a special function and a special commission. So they used to say appendix has no use, but it has a use, and that causes itself. So all of us are called for a purpose. Some are instrument players, some are preachers, some are sweepers in church, some are amen corners, some are prayer warriors. Everyone is a vessel shaped for a specific uh, purpose. There is no spectator in the house of God, and everyone must abide in the calling wherein they were called. So it's about teamwork. We work together. We are co-workers. Today is a workers' day. So we'll have our workers that will be co-workers. And everyone has a purpose in the great work and the commission. But Christ is the head. So all operations are directed from the head, from the intelligence. Now he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, Now there are many diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are many differences um, of administrations, but the same Lord. So there are many manifestations of the Spirit, but it's the same Holy Spirit operating in this one with the gift of tongues, gift of healing, gift of miracles, but it's the same Holy Spirit operating in the church. It says, for by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Greek. We are all baptized. You become a member of the body of Christ, not by joining, but by the Holy Ghost baptism. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? There are some people who want to isolate themselves from the things of the church. They want, when there is blame, they say, oh, the city Tepaneku, they are no longer part of us. So, uh, if the ear shall say, because I'm not of the eye, uh, um, I'm not a member of the body. Is it therefore not a member of the body? You are a member of the body as long as you are in Christ. If the whole body were the eye, where is the hearing? If the whole body were the hearing, where is the smelling? So we can't all be preachers, but everyone has a special duty and purpose in the kingdom of God. But now God has set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. It's not according to whether it pleases the pastor or pleases so, so and so, but it's God as he pleases. If they, if they all were one member, where is the body? We can't all be doing the same thing, but there's a special purpose for everyone. But now, many members, yet one body. So we must know that even as a local assembly, 
We are connected to other local assemblies everywhere. There is no church that is, can put other churches in the hands of the devil or can be superior to others because we are organs and connected. As long as we all have the Holy Spirit, we are part of the same body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. No, again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We have heard people saying that to one another, that I have no need of you. They were declaring independence against each other. This one is saying, we have no need to keep your whatever and we keep our... That's not so with the body of Christ. We are united and interdependent. God put something that you will need in your brother. And the other one he put in this other sister. So that you are not complete without other Holy Ghost filled Christians. That's why in the upper room, not everyone had a pillar of fire. Each one had a lake of fire. A, a lick of fire. So, the, so that together with those lick of fires, they rebuild the, the pillar of fire. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. The brother that you despise is very necessary and he's not going anywhere. He's there. You are going to despise him. As you despise him, you are not discerning the Lord's body. Because there are many people are sick for failing to discern the Lord's body. Um, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these bestow more, more abundant honor. And our uncomely part have more abundant comeliness. The people that we despise here in church have a bigger crown than sometimes even pastors because they are the ones who pray for the pastor to catch the inspiration. So it's not about standing here. There are some people who are the engine house of the church, but they have never stood to sing or to preach. But they are the prayer warriors of this church. For our comely parts have no need. But God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacketh. Even in the home, the weaker vessel has more honor. Uh, they are not more beautiful than the stronger vessel. The man, the woman is the weaker vessel. There's more honor. I was saying that even uh, if you say among the five senses, which sense can you say is the smallest? Someone may say the sense of smelling, but it has been proven that people who had no sense of smelling, they died in the next, within the next 10 years of depression because life without the sense of smell is not only about smelling. You don't enjoy your food. You don't enjoy your life. You don't know whether something is burning. We don't know what is happening. So they die of depression. But when that sense is there, you don't know how much it is valued. Sometimes when the person that you don't know their value is removed, that's when you know the value of that person. That there should be no schism in the body, but that members should be the same care one for another. There should be no friction, there should be no competition, there should be no attitudes and moods against one another in the body of Christ. But love should be circulating in the body of Christ. And whether one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice. If a member of this church is now maybe promoted to be the governor of the reserve bank, we are all blessed. Who we'll buy new chairs, who we'll buy new whatever, because the whole church is now promoted. But if one member is in, in Bilo Hospital, let's suffer with that member. If one member loses a, a relative, let's suffer with that member. Don't rejoice that I, I, God is now beating that one, he was not working right. If your foot is not working right and we cut it, you will suffer. The, the whole board will be admitted. Um, I was seeing there is a, a rare condition uh, that I, I was reading about. It's called the body integrity disorder. In body I, integrity identity disorder. This man from Australia, them, is one of the people who have that is disorder. There are few people who have that disorder. When even from a young age, what happens is that he, when he has his normal body, he sees that his foot. He just feels like this foot is not part of me. It will be normal. It has nothing wrong with that foot. But it's a disorder that when you have it, when you look at your hand, it disturbs you. It, there is nothing wrong with the hand. 
but you feel like it must be cut. It's not part of me. And many of those people with that disorder, when they have an amputation and they're working on one leg, they feel a relief. They feel like now they are perfect. Uh, you, you must note that there will be nothing wrong with that food. There will be nothing wrong, but the, somehow the body fails to register the identity of that food as part of the body. I've seen, even in marriages, an identity, body integrity identity disorder where you feel like this sister is not part of my life. And then when she's gone now, people see that you are struggling, but you think you are okay. There are people who feel like, ah, these officers should not be part of us. And when that officer leaves you to do your things, that's when you realize that the body is now crippled. It's just an autoimmune disease in the church where the body fights its own members. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30, For we are members of his body, and of his flesh, and of his bones. So we are members together. The, even if the eye does not like the shape of the hands, the hands cannot be shaped like the eye. They have a different function. So we have, as many local churches, we are connected. Whether you are past, under pastor so and so, there must not be any church politics because there is no body politics. Now, the human body is one head that controls it. So we are all controlled, not from a headquarters somewhere, but from the very body of Christ. She is him. We are part of him. Uh, we must never break the body of Christ. To break the body of Christ means to crucify him again. Because his body was broken for us at the cross. So you have no right to re-break the body that was broken at the cross or to re-crucify. So now I'm going to read a certain scripture very soon and I want you to see the other meaning of that scripture. Um, now when we're a family, we used to eat together. Um, uh, uh, even from the one plate. It caused a bond in the family when we eat from one plate. It was not poverty. That's why when we come to the communion table, we are a family. We are eating from one plate, from one table. That's what has bonded us together because when you come from the same plate, maybe we have not eaten salsa together from the same plate, but I have seen you picking bread from the same plate that I picked from. So you are one body, you are eating as one family, eating together on one table, even the message table, even the scripture table. Now, though the members are one and connected. It does not mean that the left hand must know what the right hand is doing because there is still privacy in the members of the body. It doesn't mean that because we are now one, when this one confesses this, you go to the other member of the body and confess this, 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 this. There are some things that are known by the brain only. There are some things that are not known by even the toe there. And what sometimes is happening to the toe, unless if the brain wants the whole body to know, not if the lung, not if any other member, if God wants all of you to know, he's the only one that can reveal it. He has made one blood of every, every nation to dwell upon the face of the earth. So that's why even a Chinese, Indian, black man can intertransfuse because we are one blood. There's no shown and the there's no rich or poor. We are one in Christ. So that is the invisible union of the bride of Christ and the heavenly bridegroom. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. So we members, like you are a real member. Like <laughs> you are a member of the body of Christ. And God has set some in his church, first apostles, then prophets and earthly teachers, and after that miracles and gifts of healings and helps. There are some brothers who have no gift for healing. They are not spiritually mad, and really, but that is their spiritual make that they are helps. They are just there to help you. So when things are hard in the church, those helps are there. They will come um, to, to their um, activity and governments and diversity. So we have governments here in church. Not really government of Zimbabwe, but the governments of church that will govern in the PA systems, govern 
in the church property garden, in the missionary funds garden, in the building programs. So we are not all apostles, but everyone has a part. He says, covet earnestly the best gifts, yet I show you a more excellent way. In the next chapter, he reveals the more excellent way, which is love. Because even the prophet says, I'd rather go to a church with love than a church with all nine spiritual gifts and no love. Love is above all expressions of the gifts of God because love is unending. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accused. This is the scripture that I said I want you to see the other meaning of it because obviously it stands obvious as it is now that obviously no one can say by the Spirit of God that Jesus is cursed. But if you come to that brother and say you are cursed, you are saying Jesus is cursed because that's the body of Christ. If you, you may not say me collectively I'm cursed, but if you say my head is cursed or my arm is cursed, you are saying I am cursed. If you are saying my little feet are cursed, you are in problems because you are actually despising me. So, with all lowness and meekness and long suffering and forbearing uh, one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, let's be united in church, no gossip, no church politics. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. We are one body, and in Ephesians 4 verse 11 he says, he gave to some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, so when the pastors are standing, they must not uh, accuse evangelists. When the evangelists come, they must not fight pastors. When the apostles do their work, they must not call others less. Everyone is doing according to the measure of grace given to them for the perfection of the church and the edifying of the body of Christ. But speaking in truth, in love, and that you may grow unto him in all things. Inasmuch as this body is growing, we must grow as the body of Christ. The prophet says to the Branham Tabernacle, he says, I've watched you when they were speaking in tongues and interpreting and what? He says, now I'm placing you in order in the climax of the spiritual things. So, from whom the whole body fitly joined together is compacted by what every joint supplies. So, every connection is supplying something. The brother and sister that you despise is supplying something to the church. Do you know in the church, even not in the mystic body of Christ, let me say generally in the church, because there's a difference between the church and the mystic body of Christ. There's a difference between City Tepaneku and the mystic body of Christ, because not every member of City Tepaneku is any organ of the body of Christ. Those who are filled of the Holy Ghost, they are the organs, they are baptized into the body of Christ. But even at City Tep, we need the believer, we need the unbeliever, we need the make believer. All those three are needed. When you start your song in soprano, you need the unbelievers best there to come and make the song nice. When we are even doing offerings, we need the unbelievers' contribution to build the church. So we need everyone in the church of God. But more, we need bright material in the church of God. So, I mean, I'm honest. You will never hear me saying I'm not after numbers. I need numbers. If Christ is lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Even the prophet says, I'm in my second million. We are after numbers which are bright material. <laughs> Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man the truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one another. No matter how you gossip that person, you are gossiping yourself. You are members of one another. But those gossipers, I think I need to have a meeting with gossipers. Those are the people who can go with the gossiper, gospel. Uh, because they are speakers. They have a gift of speaking that needs rechanneling. It says, be you angry? He's just putting it there that one day you'll be angry with your brother, but don't let the sun set without reconciling with that brother and give no occasion for the devil. Now, people give attention to the dead members of the body. One hour, they are doing their hair. 
because the hair is dead. If you cut it, there's no pain. The next one hour, they are doing their nails because the nails are dead. If you cut them, you feel no pain. But you need more time on the liveliest member of your body called the soul. It is the most alive member of your body. My brain is not alive as the soul is alive. Right. Um, the, we have a fivefold ministry. We have the vital organs. The heart is like the, the, the apostles starting new place, spreading the blood and uh, starting new areas. The, the liver is like um, the detox fires. When poisons come in the churches, they remove the poisons. They remove the wrong fashions and wrong teachings there. And then we have the lungs, the pastors who say, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Then we have the kidneys that regulate, that balance things, the teachers. So everyone has a place in the body of Christ. To everyone has a position in the mystic body of Christ. But the, the vital organs, like the heart, that's why we must have a heart transplant because Christianity is a condition of the heart. Your heart must be hungry and thirsty for the things of God. You must have the four skins of your heart removed and the stony heart removed. God remolding your life and making you a new creature. But the longest distance that the word takes is when it moves from your intellect, from the brains, straight to the heart. Because the word can penetrate even the stony heart and transform the hardest and the vilest offender to be a real Christian. So, the light of the body is the eye, the Bible says. If the eye is single, the body is in light. If the eye is in darkness, the body is full of darkness. So all those who are in leadership condition, position must be a good light to those who are following. If you are driving a, a car with a trailer, you can't drive in bushes and paths because that trailer is following. It's going to bounce on trees and it's going to be your account while it's bouncing on those trees. So the light of the body is the eye. Leadership that's why we have a clean prophet who stood and declared the word for us that those who are going to stand as song leaders, as teachers, as pastors must live a holy, clean, pure life because when the light, uh, when the eye is alright your attitude also to the other people is okay you don't have to remove a moat in your brother and accuse him when you have a look in your own eye you must ask yourself before you help others stand pure those who are handling the waters of separation yet to be a man of clean life. So we are built now by this message to the stature of a perfect man. The body has systems that stabilize in the body. So we are also built to be in perfection where we are the body of Christ. God is building a masterpiece. It was the feet in the days of, of Luther. It was the body in the days of Wesley. In the days of Pentecostals, it was speaking in tongues, the mouth, but now has come the intelligence, the body, the headstone. You cannot trim the headstone to fit the body, but you trim the body to fit the head. So you won't change the word to fit you, but you change yourself to fit the word of God. So we are all members of the body. Even Isaiah gave that um, metaphor, analogy to say, uh, from the sole of the feet, even to the head, there is no sinus, but bruises and putrefying sores. The church was in a miserable condition with sores and sin and pains everywhere. They needed healing as the church. So he was giving a picture there, Isaiah, giving a picture of the church as the body of Christ. The church must not be swayed by things that hold no water. They must not have personality cults. Even if you love your leaders and pastors, have the word above your love for your leaders so that when they stray from the word the whole church does not stray with the leaders but they keep a balance of the unit of the spirit so church politics has no place in the body of Christ there should be no cliques for those who are undeveloped, those who are shown up, those who have money, those who have no money those who are spiritual and those who are thought not to be spiritual but we should be one body in one love that's why the prophet preached in the five definite identifications of the true body of Christ, the church, the Masonic empire, that how do we get to that? He gave the five questions that what is the church? Who set it up? What is its message? How do you become a member of it? 
and because the gates of hell cannot prevail under, against that church. But now, the church, our fellowship together is based on forgiveness. If you don't forgive one another, you cannot go far as a church. You need to heal from the wounds that you inflicted or the devil inflicted among you. Because a heart that is filled with anger has no room for love. There should be no root of bitterness among Christians. Your heart must be pure. Don't have an ought against your brother or your sister. The prophet says, if you have an ought against sinner or saint, you are in danger of hellfire. So the root of damage, uh, of, of, of bitterness, has damaged a lot of homes. Because the roots will go and it will crack even concrete. It will crack even trust. Our bond of Christianity can be cracked by roots of bitterness and rumors that are wrong among the church of God. So we must be your brother's keeper. Don't accept any accusation against your brother or against your sister. Or don't have a crush against one another, but always forgive one another. Like, don't have a goal of bitterness or bond of iniquity. There are many diversities, but it's God who empowers them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for common good. Now, there are systems in the body. There is a God is the best plumber. You know, there will be injury in the church, there will be injury in your body, but there must be a healing mechanism that when things go wrong in the church, there must be a plan of recovery so that you don't, if the, if the body does not repair that injury, you lose all the blood going out of the body, you lose all people going out of church like that. But there must be a way of mending the injured spot. So there is a mechanism that is there within the body that makes a clot, that makes the fibers that cover there. So when there's an injury, when you, are, when you have a pain, there is a system in the church that takes care of that. Because in Colossians 1 verse 18 it says, Christ is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. Now, there are some times where the body fights its own an autoimmune situation where you find the body sending soldiers to damage the skin and you see patches all over. That's what happens in the church where the people, even deacon against deacon, or pastor against pastor, or preacher against preacher, one, instead of fighting the devil, there is a lot of bacteria in the body that must be fought, but they are now fighting one another. And you see marks of damage in the church. That is an autoimmune disorder. When people declare independence against each other, I don't need you, I don't, you need that brother, you need someone, whether it's weak or what, you need one another because in the rapture, you are going to stimulate one another's faith. So we need to be united, we need to be, there is power in unity. When the enemy comes against us, we can perish if we are not united because God has given us power in unity that whatever comes against us, will be defeated by our one voice, one mind, one faith, one prayer, one mind, one heart. We overcome the enemy and he cannot win against the church. You live for others if you are a Christian. Nothing in nature lives for itself. Rivers don't drink their own water. Trees don't eat their own fruit. Sun does not give its own heat. Moon does not ever go to honeymoon. Flowers don't spread fragrance for themselves. Do something for someone. You see, to show that we are from the tree of life, even our body, even our lungs, where the breath of life comes in, is shaped like a tree because we are members of the body of Christ. There are no weak parts and strong parts in God. If you have an ounce of the power of God in, in you, it's enough to move mountains. You must be reflections and billboards and images for Christ. If you have a scratch of the power of God in you, it's enough to create another world, actually. And whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. You have the spiritual DNA of God in you, that you have the very nature of God. And every day you are reading, you are being transformed to that very image. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is ruling in us, and greater is he that is within us than the one in the world. For by one spirit we are all baptized to one body, and we drink of that same spirit. There is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We have one Father. Now, there are some members of the body. There are some people who have a very long tongue. Um, 
people can have other members of body, very long ear or long nose or what, but if you have a long tongue, that a loose tongue that speaks against other members of the body, the tongue is a very small member of the body, but it can cause fire in the church. If a sister just calls and says, I've seen that brother doing this, 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 and they have no evidence against it, it causes a schism in the body of Christ. The body is systems that keep it alive. There is a lymphatic system that makes sure infections are removed from organs. So we have a lymphatic system of evangelists that will purify the church with courts and the powerful uh, missiles of the word to remove infections from the church. We have a muscular, a skeletal system. The church must have a backbone to stand, not wishy-washy, not a, a wishbone. We also have an immune system. The immune system means when things come, when fashions come, when demons come, we have gifted members of the body of Christ that will deal and descend and pick those infections away from the church so that purity remains in the church of God. When sin comes in, it is picked by descendant and it is called out and the church is kept clean by the power of the blood of Christ. We have our spiritual immune system. Uh, you may have spiritual HIV because the Bible says, I think it's Proverbs 13, says, uh, he that, that does not keep his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Whatever comes, it takes you. You have opportunistic infections in the church, opportunistic demons, opportunistic political spirits in the church that take opportunity when you are not loving one another. But you must keep all infections away. There is a way of other pathogens and parasites that invade the immune system of the body by like this uh, Benazia parasite it can cover itself with the body's blood, red blood cells so when the body is scanning to see is this part of us it will say yes it's part of us because it's covering itself with the body's mask there are some things that people cover with quotes and scriptures when they are not part of the message and they, 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 they evade the immunist they evade the blasting of evangelists. They evade, they evade even the systems that should remove those things from the church. Amen. When you ask some people that ah, this could be high issue, they say, ah, the inches, brother. They, so it evades now Amen. the immune system of the church. There is the muscular system of the body, like our faith is our muscles. If you use them, you get more of them. Then there's the cardiovascular system, the circulation of the blood of Jesus. When the blood is circulating in the body, it reaches even the smallest member, even the toe, smallest toe. Rather, those small members, if you ever dash your small toe in the corner of your wardrobe somewhere, you will know that that small toe matters. <laughs> if that small toe has a cons there, it will cause the rest, and you will know that it, it matters in the body. <laughs> now, those members that are far from the heart, as I'm about to close, that are far from the center, like the feet are far from the heart, they are the furthest from the heart there. Those are the members that die first when you have the diabetic foot. It doesn't affect uh, maybe the ribs or things, or the diabetic infections. They affect mainly the extremities uh, more than those that are near the heart. So don't be far from the ministry. Don't be far from the happenings of the spiritual. Because when death comes, it hits those who are far there, far there, far there. We are not connected to the ministry. So the immune system, it starts with your skin and uh, it has levels. You're, there should be a way that a Christian must overcome temptation, must pick wrong habits and overcome them. At home level there, before church level, there must be spiritual immunity there. Now, I will just mention this as I'm about to close. The, there is a spread of cancer in the body. It's called metastasis. A cancer can start maybe in the lungs. Then it spreads through the lymphatic system or blood vessels. These methods of spread are the same method that should spread the things that should heal cancer. But now they are spreading the very cancer. The brothers and sisters who should spread forgiveness in the church. 
we should spread a message of reconciliation. And now the ones who are saying, did you hear? Did you hear that story? And then that cancerous thing is now in the heart, in the brains. It now even enters the very ministry and it destroys the church. That's why the prophet says, a gossip spirit is a spiritual cancer in the church. It destroys the church. Now, if your hand causes you to sin, cut that hand. Then for the whole body to die. That's why when the foot has cancer, they ask you, they say, let's cut this foot because it's going to damage your heart. That's where you give away someone to the devil for the destruction of the flesh so that that person is brought back to the unit of the spirit again uh, when they learn lessons of life outside there. But when we put you in the hands of the devil, don't stay there and say, relief. Just be passive by, at least at palace then, pass by and say, hey, is it now okay, brothers? Then we see how to help you. But if you cut the, body, the part of the body, be sure that it's cancer. Because you are going to miss that part of the body. Paul just cut off Mark and said, Mark, John Mark is a cancer, let him go. Then later he says, mm, bring back John Mark. We need him in the ministry. You are going to cry to bring back that sister that you are crying against. Now, we all started as a little thing, insignificant. Started as an unseen thing. It's just a, a, a flat thing, a, a disc there. And we started growing. And in that stage, when we were young, and maybe like a grain of salt in the mother's womb, in that stage, we had what is called pluripotent stem cells. Those cells can become your anything in the body. They can become muscles. They can become bones. They can become blood. They, can, they are able to become anything because the body is still small. When the church started, the pastor could be could become a deacon, he could become a sweeper, he could become a financer, he could become a trustee because the church was still small. But as the body grows, those parts, they then mature and this one takes this line to be muscles. This one takes this line to be bones. This one takes this line to be deacons. This one takes this line to be missionaries. This one takes this line to be Sunday school teacher because the body is maturing. Um, when you are right-handed, it means your left side of the brain is more powerful than your right side of the bone. But there is a crossover because at that cross, God gave the blessings of the Jews to the Gentiles. So even in the medulla there, there is a crossover of nerves that the nerves from this side of the brain, they come to power this side of the body. So when you say my left is, I'm left-handed, don't despise your right hand because you are getting blessings from the right side of the brain, from the left side of the brain. So we are a body, there is an immune system uh, that fights evil things from the church. There is a sensory system that you must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as a, as a member of the body of Christ. Be sensitive to one another's needs because that sensory system makes sure that you don't burn yourself. When you touch something, before the brain even knows, you remove because uh, it's a protection in the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the temple. That's why the temple is human shaped. We are the pillars in the temple of God. We are the tabernacle, tabernacle deity. God is shaping you to be in the stature of a perfect man and members of the body of Christ. And growing in the, having the fruit of the spirit and having the gifts of the spirit and growing to the stage of a perfect man and feeding on the word of God, becoming sons and daughters of God. Because whatever God is, that's what we are. He's, he, his number, he knows the number of your hair. We are in his mind. He, he, we, are, we are the apple of his eye. His ear is not dull of hearing us. He's at the blast of his nostril, the Red Sea was open. He has a sword that comes out of his mouth. Um, we are in his shoulders. He, he carries us like lambs on his shoulders. His arm is not shortened that it cannot save us. His hand is not uh, heavy also to help. We are written in the palm of his hand. And we are his body. We lie in his bosom. We nest from him is El Shaddai. So he's everything to us. 
he has a name written in his thigh. That is the word of God. He, we are born of his bone, flesh of his flesh. God bless you. We will sing a song as we shall just have a short prayer. Then we get to talking about just with, uh, our officers for this year.